What is up my disciples, Coding Jesus here. If you're looking at the screen right now and you're asking yourself, hey Coding Jesus, what are all those instruments? Then this video is for you. Because in today's video, we are talking about user-defined spreads. What a user-defined spread is, what the different types are, do they expire, how are they listed, how are they delisted, what are their composition, are there a log of different UDSs that are created? All of those and more will be answered in today's video. Let's start off with the basics first. Coding Jesus, what the hell is a user-defined spread and why is it important for a quant trader? A user-defined spread is an instrument made up of other instrument legs. They are submitted by the client system to the exchange. The client system is the quant trader. He's sitting there on his desk and he submits a UDS via some sort of gateway that quantitative developers create and it's accepted or rejected by the exchange. If it's accepted, it's disseminated to all market participants along with a message to request for a quote on that instrument. And the trader that recently created that UDS can now actively trade that instrument. All right, Coding Jesus, so what are the different types of UDSs that a quantitative trader can create? There are three different types. From order of increasing complexity, the first is a combo, the second is a recursive UDS, and the third is a covered combo. What the hell is a combo? A combo is a UDS, and you know that a UDS is simply a collection of other instruments, packaged into one instrument. Therefore, a combo is a collection of other instruments that are solely outright options. An exchange lists options with various maturities and various strikes. Let's say I pick one maturity, a group of options expiring in a week. There's a collection of options expiring in a week that all have various strikes. I will want to create a UDS or a combo made up of various outright options. I will pick two options in the expiry coming up this week. I will buy a call at a low strike price and sell a call at a high strike price. This is known as a bullish call spread. Now a bullish call spread, it doesn't exist on the exchange. They don't create that. It doesn't exist the moment the exchange opens every day. Rather, an exchange will list outright options, and me as a trader will have to create the UDS that I want to see the exchange provide. So I will go ahead and say, hey, I wanna buy a bull call spread. But the exchange doesn't have it, so let me pick these two options and submit a UDS request to the exchange. Once that's done, I can then go ahead and trade that bull call spread. The second type of UDS is a recursive UDS. A recursive UDS is exactly like how it sounds. It's a UDS in a UDS. It's UDSception. Let's say, for example, I go ahead and create that bull call spread I just mentioned. It now is available for trading. I can now take that UDS, that bull call spread, and I create, can create another UDS with it inside of it. So I can take the bull call spread, add on another option of a different strike, onto that bull call spread and submit it as a request to create this new instrument to the exchange. Now there are various rules that I can get into, but one rule that's very important to keep in mind is a UDS that's recursive can only have one level of recursion. You can't have a UDS and a UDS and a UDS and a UDS. The exchange won't process it. At the same time, a UDS, whether recursive or non-recursive, could only include up to 40 different instruments. So yes, it is a collection of different instruments, but it's a collection of different instruments with a cap of 40 instruments. The last UDS type that I'd like to talk about is a covered combo. It is the first type of UDS we talked about, a combo, but it is covered. What the hell does it mean that it is covered? Well, what it means is that a trader will tack on a future to that options combo. So like I said, guys, a combo is simply a collection of outright options. And when it is covered, a trader attaches a future onto that collection of outright options. In doing so, he needs to make sure that that covered combo is delta neutral, meaning that the delta of every single option added to the delta of the future adds up to zero. Now, if you don't know what delta is, that topic's for another video, but to put it very shortly, delta is the price sensitivity of a given option for a change in the underlying, otherwise known as the hedge ratio. Okay, so we covered combos, recursive UDSs, and covered combos. But are there various other nuances in the creation of these instruments? Yes, there are, and I'd like to talk about one of them in particular. That is the difference between an exchange-recognized UDS and an exchange-unrecognized UDS. Let's take a look at the first type of UDS that we talked about, simply combos. 
A combo can either be exchange recognized or unrecognized. And another word for unrecognized is generic. What does that mean? Well, let's say I take the exact same example as I had before. I want to buy a call at a low strike and sell a call at a high strike and create a UDS with these two options. When I submit that to the exchange as a quantitative trader, the exchange will run various checks on that UDS. And one of the checks will run is, can I qualify this UDS as some sort of known structure? There's a various list on the CME's websites of known structures, but some examples are iron condors, butterflies, call spreads, put spreads, etc., etc. Okay, let's say the exchange identifies, hey, these two options, I recognize, you know, the strikes, and I recognize that, you know, the lower one is a buy, the higher one's a sell. That looks like a, a, call, a, a, a bull call spread to me. I'm gonna label that as a bull call spread. And in the instrument symbol that's disseminated to all market participants, which we'll get to in a sec, you will see it has the two letters call spread. Or if it's an iron condor, it will have IC iron condor. If it's a butterfly, it'll have BO. Okay, now what if the exchange can't recognize this collection of instruments in the UDS request? Will it re reject your UDS request? No, it won't. It'll disseminate this UDS as a combo, but as a generic combo, GN or GE, either GN or GE. But it will recognize that it doesn't recognize it, and hence it will put either GE or GN in the instrument symbol. All right, guys, now we're going to be talking about the process or the methodology for creating this UDS. We talked about what a UDS is, the various type, what's the process coding Jesus? Well, the process is actually quite simple. There are really three actors here, the quant trader, the exchange, and everybody else. What will happen is that a quantitative developer like myself will build a gateway for a quantitative trader to create user-defined spreads. Now, a quantitative trader will pick four things for every single instrument that he wants in his UDS. He will pick the security ID, which will be implicit by him picking the instrument he wants. He will pick the price, which will once again be implicit by the strike. He will pick the delta, which may or may not be applicable. And he will also pick the ratio. How many of that option does he want in this actual UDS? All right, once he does that, he will hit send or submit or whatever. There'll be a fancy user interface that's beautiful and easy to use. And a iLink message will be created. Now the iLink message is 35 equals C. 35 equals C is a security definition request. That'll be sent to the exchange. The exchange will go like boop, 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 right? It'll analyze what it sent, what the trader sent in the UDS request. It'll either accept or reject it based off a given rule set. Some of the rules I previously mentioned. If it's accepted, the trader will receive back a message that will be displayed on his front end, you know, UDS accepted. And that, UD, and that message is tag 35 equals D, security request acknowledgement. At the same time that the CME sent that request, security request, the security definition request acknowledgement to the trader, they will also disseminate a market data platform message to all other participants saying, hey, we have created a new instrument. This is the symbol. These are the legs. These are the details. And they will also follow that up with a request for quote on that new instrument. So, hey guys, new instrument created. Also guys, we're looking for people to quote this. Once the trader receives that acknowledgement that I previously mentioned, he will most likely actually submit an order for that instrument. He wants to buy or sell X amount at that newly created combo, covered combo, or recursive UDS. All right, guys, we've talked a bit about that. Let's talk about the UDS composition very briefly. As I mentioned, a UDS is simply a collection of instruments, but it can't be a collection of any instrument. You can't mix water futures with gold options with, you know, equities, futures, you can't do that. The UDS composition has to be instruments of the same security group. For example, you can have gold futures with gold options. You can have one year euro dollar options with three year euro dollar options and tag on a euro dollar future. But you can't be mixing and matching to put it very shortly for you guys. Okay, so you know what a UDS is, you know the composition, you're probably now wondering what the hell is the life cycle of these UDSs? How are these UDSs not only created, which we actually just talked about, but when do they expire rather? That's really the key here. What happens to them once you've created them? There's actually quite simple rules for these guys that only take a minute to explain. We talked about three different UDSs, combo, recursive, and covered. Covered UDSs will only last for that given trading day. 
at the end of the day, they're gone. Or if one of the legs of that covered UDS expires before the day is over, then that UDS is also gone. Now, what about combos, non-covered UDSs? Well, these rules are a little more complex, but I'm gonna summarize them quite briefly for you guys. They expire at the shortest between the first expiry of any leg in that combo, the end of the trading week, or if there's a good till canceled order on that covered, on that combo rather, at the end of the week, then it will be extended to the, to the end of the week of the next week. All right, so to summarize guys, at the earliest of one of its legs expiring, at the end of the week, or if the combo still has a good till cancel order, at the end of the week, at the close, it'll be extended to the end of the next week. All right, guys, now that we understand the basics of UDSs, why quant traders actually submit a UDS, what they are, etc., let's now talk about redundancy. And what do I mean by redundancy coding, Jesus? Well, this is particularly important if you are a quantitative developer. You might be asking yourself, hey, okay, a UDS expired, but how do I know it ever existed? Great question. At the end of every trading day, an exchange will publish something called a security definition file on some FTP server that they have. Your firm might have some sort of cron job or some sort of system that at the end of the day will copy that security definition file from the exchange's FTP server to your local machine or local server or whatever, and it will store them you know, partitioned on date. Now, what the hell is in this file coding, Jesus, in this security definition file? Well, exactly that, security definitions. Every single security definition request acknowledgement message, that 35 equals D message, will be in that security definition file. Let's take a quick look at how that looks before ending this video. All right, everybody. What I'm looking at right now is a security definition file for April 13th, 2021. Before we get into what's actually in here, let's first talk about this file. This file is generated at the end of each trading day, and I believe at the beginning of each trading day as well, by the CME, and it's stored on their production FTP servers. They have three different environments, or I know at least two of them, certification and, and production. They have various FTP servers for those environments, so this is stored on the production FTP server, stored at the end of the, each trading day, at the beginning of each trading day. Okay, this file is not updated throughout the day, it is only updated at the end of the day with all instruments created throughout the day and at the beginning of the day. Okay guys, why would somebody even need this file to begin with? This file is a collection of all security definition acknowledgements or the creation of all securities throughout the day. So 35 equals D as you can see throughout this entire file. But, but why would I need that? Let's say I'm looking at market data. Now market data won't contain the fine grained information about every security. It'll only, create, it'll only contain the security ID for that given entry. For example, if it's an order book update, it'll contain the security ID of the order book update, what, what instrument was updated. If it's a trade, it will contain the security ID of that given trade. Now, let's just say, for example, I don't have historical information in my database about every single security ever created. Then what I can do is I can cross-reference that security ID in the market data with the security ID for that given day in this security definition file. I can find that security ID and then I can garner information about that security from this file. So without further ado, let's take a look at the tags here. I'm gonna start with tag 1151 because it is the most relevant tag to begin with. This tag is a security definition group or the security group rather. I already know that T dollar sign stands for treasuries. The next tag that's important, 6937, that is OZN. OZN is Treasury's Options. I'm not sure if it's the 30 year or the 10 year. Then we have tag 55. 55 stands for symbol. And as you can see here, you know it's a UDS because it has a very wacky and unreally recognizable symbol. UD, user defined. T dollar sign, Treasuries. BO, what does BO mean? Remember at the beginning of this video, I said that combos have two categories, recognized and unrecognized? BO is a recognized tag. It stands for butterfly. It is a structure of UDS that the exchange recognizes, so in the symbol, it tags it with BO, meaning butterfly. Then it has some fancy numbers that aren't really that important for this video. Then we have tag 48, which is a security ID. This is a security ID of this given combo, this given UDS, as recognized by the exchange. All right, the next thing we should look at is tag 555. That'll give us the number of legs in this instrument. 
Let's go ahead and find that. Tag 555, we'll need to scroll, and I know I opened this in Notepad, which might be a mistake. Da, 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 da. Okay, tag 555. Five, tag 555 equals three. That means there are three legs in this UDS. Tag 602. 602 is a security ID of the first instrument in this UDS. 603, don't need to worry about. 624, I believe that's buy or sell. I can be wrong, but it's, I'll correct it in the video if I'm wrong, but it's either buy or sell, okay? Now we go on to the next 602. This next 602 is the instrument ID of the next instrument in this given UDS. So it's 609733, whatever that is. And then finally, you know, we skip over these. So 624 equals two, I believe that means sell, where 624 equals one means buy. Anyways, we skip, skip, skip. The next 602, so the third instrument in this UDS, has a security ID or instrument ID, whatever you want to call it, of 250091. And once again, it has another, another set of tags that correspond to that given security. All right, guys, hopefully you've learned something in this video. I don't want it to be too long, but I want it to be high level enough so you understand what a UDS is and low level enough that you understand what a UDS is made of, the methodology for creating one, its composition, the different types, etc., etc. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, double tap thumbs down. Subscribe to the channel, guys, for more of this information. I don't think anybody's talking about this in YouTube. I'm probably the only person talking about this quant trading stuff. Um, if you want to support this community, I have a Patreon link in the description box below. If you want to join our Discord, link in the description box below. And if you want one-on-one -on -one consulting with me, whether it's software, career, code, whether you're in the second grade or you're 44 years old, doesn't matter. Hit me up via my email and book a session with me on Calendly. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.